house, whatever the case may be, was bought here using the company currency, which we call. Chad, these are the Trillbillies. Uh, they are uh, leftists from. Where are they and from originally? And a lot of people think that this is something that's, you know, far in the distant past. But my granddad was paid in company money until the 70s. Let's say you're a boss. Kentucky. <laughs> if you create your own currency, obviously you can keep more of your real U.S. dollars in your pocket because you're not playing your workers. And it's also a really effective means of social control. If you make your employees dependent on the company in every way, whether it's their mortgages, their wages, the things that they buy from the store, uh, then you have a more effective way of controlling every single aspect of their lives. And then you've made really complacent, obedient workers. And that's what every boss wants. A lot of companies are trying to do this. Uh, Amazon, you know, Amazon will offer their employees benefits in Amazon gift cards, for example. Amazon and all these companies now, they do the exact same thing for the exact same reason. They want you to be alienated. The more that they can make you dependent on the company itself, uh, that serves that purpose. If you're in the United States, wealth is built generationally, typically. People around here didn't really have the opportunity to do that because they weren't participating in the real world economy. They were paid in fake money. Uh, they you know, couldn't use that money to max out their retirement vehicles or their Roth IRAs or whatever the case may be to leave anything for the people after they died. And so what happens is you get locked into this sort of vicious cycle of generational poverty. And uh, yeah, we're still experiencing that here. So think about today you probably get your health care through your employer. That's a very advantageous system for your boss and for your employer. It makes you more dependent on them. It makes it harder for you to go take your labor somewhere else and sell it elsewhere. Well, that legacy began in places like the one behind Think about it like this, chatter. In order to become a more productive member in the American labor force, you had to get a college education. That college education made you an insane amount of debtor to an insane degree, right? So now because you have to pay back that debt in the form of student loans, right? Now you have to take on whatever fucking job you can in a job market where they can offer you whatever the fuck they want. Then if you're fortunate enough, you finally get a job and that job also uh, uh, pays for your health care, okay? So now you're dependent on the shit job that's paying you whatever the fuck they want to pay you so you can pay off your student loan debt. And on top of that, it's maybe if you are incredibly fortunate, incredibly fortunate, also covering your health care. You will never want to leave that job now. You are way, way less likely to leave that job now because you don't want to lose your fucking health care. If you lose your health care, the only alternative for you that's available is COBRA which is a wonderful government program where, uh, you know, you're allowed to pay for the entirety of your job covered healthcare bill that is subsidized by your paycheck originally, but now you don't have a paycheck. For example, when I left TYT, I was paying for the platinum healthcare coverage that I had there. Thanks to the Cobra, uh, uh, bill. I paid $666 a month. I was very fortunate. Could you imagine? So think about that. These are many different ways that the government keeps you dependent on, and, and more importantly, employee-based ba uh, insurance keeps you subjugated to your job and uh, very much not free. And is here. And historically, Appalachia and communities like this have been sort of the proving ground for what bosses, employers can get away with. I mean, this is tomorrow's people, man. This is everything that you want to see happening in the next 20 or 30 years. That's right here. Having here first, baby. <laughs> so don't be surprised if Mark Zuckerberg starts trying to pay his employees in Facebook bucks, because it's something that we've seen before. And don't take out that fucking Apple credit card. I'm Terrence. I'm Tom. We're the Trillbillies. And you're watching Means TV. That's right.
The new Amazon facility in Tijuana. Is this real? I don't know if this is a real photo or not. That's the housing for the Tijuana Amazon facility. No shot. I don't believe this. Would it surprise you? No, but it's a little too on the nose. Relevant houses that can't be built in America. There's a similar pattern you'll see in the skyline of cities all over the U.S. and Canada. The city is. It's not Amazon housing. Those are houses of poor people. No, but like poor people that work in the facility. I've seen Redditors saying how this is good and will give the people their jobs. That's perfect for Amazon, though. Just place it in the middle of a homeless camp like that. Wait, actually, let's. Amazon's distribution center next to cardboard houses in Tijuana unleashes criticism in networks. The municipal president of Tijuana, Carla Ruiz McFarland. I, what the fuck? McFarland, I guess. That's interesting. Uh, doesn't seem like a, doesn't seem like a Mexican last name. Um, highlight. Highlight. Yeah, it's me. Hello, Ruiz McFarland. <laughs> yeah, I'm from Tijuana. Well, by way of Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean okay highlighted that the result <laughs> this is insane the result of this new distribution center will save costs and deliver time <laughs> deliver times of products in tijuana and the next day in mexicali tecate ensenada and playas de rosaritos In Mexico City, in social networks, users criticize the contrast between the installation of the ninth floor of the e-commerce company Amazon in the country, located between cardboard houses, wood canvases for poor people, Tijuana, Baja, California. No, she married. She married a uh, McFarland. The building is 32,000 32, square meters, cost $21 million, and will be inaugurated this month. Although the day is not known, it's the second plan in the north of the country. That's nuts, dude. They get paid $326 a month? Oh my god. Nihilist take from a Colorado mountain bumpkin. The rich fucks come in here thinking they own the place. 
And they'll be safe from big disaster because landlocked mountains are going to be burned by our dead forest with us. Smile. Irish soldiers fought for Mexico during the Mexican-American War. That's why Canelo Alvarez has red hair. That's how I know. Oh. I live less than 10 miles away in San Diego and get bid 2K a month minimum wage. We are literally living in the fucking dystopian future that we predicted uh, would the future would look like. Like it's here, it's here, and it's now. Sprawling. Hey, if you like this video, please subscribe and hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future videos. 